and 9, 6. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forevermore the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Let's pray. Our Father, we're so thankful for the privilege to be in the house of God today. Help us to get a hold of this scripture and uh, teach us something today. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen and amen. Now first of all, after saying all of that, I do want to mention this. Mary, the mother of Jesus, never once accepted any form of worship or credit at all. As a matter of fact, remember the very first miracle Jesus ever did? What did Jesus instruct the disciples to do? Did she say, uh, listen to me? What did she say? Whatsoever he saith unto you, what? Do it. Who is she talking about? The Lord Jesus. Because he had told them to fill up water pots so they could turn them into wine. Remember? And everybody thought that that was a crazy idea. And it was a crazy idea. Legitimately, it was a crazy idea. His mother never once received any form of worship in the Bible. So anybody that would want to teach you that we should pray or, or preach about or worship Mary is completely off the wall because there's nowhere in the Bible that teaches that. Now there's some, there are some sectors of the Catholic faith that will even put Mary on a cross. And I've seen those statues. We live in a world that wants to do everything they can to discredit the Lord Jesus Christ in any way that we can. But I can take you to Isaiah 9, 6, hundreds of years, centuries before his birth, and show you a man that was preaching, prophesying about the Lord Jesus Christ way before he ever came to earth in a very, very specific way. In verse number 6 again, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called. Now there is a list of names here for the Lord Jesus Christ. And a couple years ago I was studying this, and I couldn't really figure out why he chose these names. Instead of the hundreds of other names in the Bible, he chose these five. Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Why choose those five? Why couldn't he have said Jesus or Emmanuel or Master? Why couldn't he use some of the, they use these five names? Well, I have a theory about that, okay? Now, I don't have any concrete proof, but I have a theory why Isaiah used these five names. You ready to hear my theory? Okay, I'm going to present to you my theory in three, different, in three different categories. You ready? Category number one would be what I call a historical theory. This is looking back at the Lord Jesus Christ, and maybe let's pick out a story and apply these names to those stories. I believe that these five names can be applied to anything that you want to talk about the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's take his first miracle. We just talked about that, right? The wedding at Cana, and Jesus turned the water into wine. And somebody said, Jesus allowed them to drink liquor. No, he didn't. Yeah, sure he did. Jesus turned the water into wine. Well, I'll tell you what Brother Sammy Allen said about that. But the Sammy Allen said, if you want to make wine out of water, I'll drink it all night long. Just don't make it out of fermented grapes. Amen? Okay, Jesus did not make uh, wine that was fermented. Uh, in the, if, you, if you study the Bible and study history, you'll know that in those days they had perpetual vineyards, grape uh, vines that grew year-round. They could make their, they could, when they made wine, new wine, They'd go out and squeeze the grapes into the glasses and serve it like that. They wouldn't even bottle. Then they had wine that they put into animal skin bottles. And when the wine would ferment, the bottles would break. Remember reading about that in the Bible? The bottles would break and they knew that when the top burst open, the string they tied around the top, when it burst, they knew that the wine had to be boiled or cast out. That's how they kept new wine. They didn't have refrigerators, but they kept it in in uh, leather bottles, animal skin bottles, and when the top would pop open, they would know that it was time to either discard or boil that to clean it out. Ain't that amazing how they could do that? The world would want to make you think that Jesus tolerated alcohol, but he never did. Okay? So at this wedding, let's look at his five names at, at this wedding. Okay? Let's look at wonderful. Was that a wonderful situation? Oh, yeah. Can you imagine? Can you imagine running out of punch at a wedding? That would be a disaster. 
And guess what? Jesus fixed it. That is called what? Wonderful. What about his name, Counselor? Can you see that in this story? Oh, yeah. When, when everything went wrong, guess who they asked? Well, they asked the Son of God. He took care of the situation. He taught them how to fix it. So any time in your life that you come upon a situation and you don't know what to do, what do you do? Well, you ask the counselor, and he will instruct you what to do. Go get water pots, fill them with water, and we'll make wine out of it. Counselor, what about the everlasting father? How do you apply that? Well, as the everlasting father, he knew how important it was. Now, that wasn't as big as the salvation of souls or heaven or hell or eternal grace and all these big doctrines, that little situation was nothing compared to all of eternity, but it was important enough to Jesus because He's the everlasting Father. And when you have something go wrong in your life, guess what? The everlasting Father wants to help you because He's your Father. He wants to look out for you. If you, if you run out of punch, God wants to do something about it. So the wonderful counselor, we skipped the mighty God. Let's go back to that. The mighty God. Well, how do you get that in that? Miracle. Who else can turn water into wine? Nobody but the mighty God. Then the everlasting Father, then the Prince of Peace. Well, can you apply that to that story? Oh, yeah. You got a bride that finds out that she's out of punch? Somebody's head's going to fly. But when you got the Lord Jesus Christ settling it all with turning water into wine, guess what? There is all of a sudden a presence of what? Peace. You can apply those five names to any story in the, in the gospel. Let's think about uh, Peter walking on the water to go to Jesus. Let's talk about that. Okay, so Jesus was walking on the water and told Peter to come, and Peter went. Okay, so let's look at that. Was that wonderful? I can't think of anything else more wonderful than walking on top of a storm. Can you? What about Counselor. Did Peter go without Jesus telling him to? No. Jesus was the counselor, so he got his information from Jesus and did what Jesus told him to do. Counselor, what about the mighty God? I'd say he's the mighty God because when he picked up, when, when him and Peter went back to the boat, guess what happened? He calmed the storm as the mighty God. What about the everlasting Father? Would anybody have ever told Peter to do something that knew would harm Peter? He was the everlasting father looking out for Peter's well-being by asking him to come walk on the water. What about the prince of peace? When Jesus calmed the storm, he was the prince of peace. You can take his, these five names and make an application to any story about Jesus in the Bible. Let's look at the second category. Not only see this historical aspect, but let's look at the prophetical aspect of it, okay? So Isaiah is speaking of Jesus hundreds of years before Jesus was ever here on earth. Hundreds of years before Jesus was ever here on earth. So it's very interesting to me how he knew what his name would be, how to make that application way before Jesus was ever born. So let's go now into the future to our day, you and I. Let's look at it now. What about in your life? Can you apply these things to your life? I should say so. This time last week, I was in Washington, D.C., on my way to South America. I had to go up before I went down, okay? So we flew up to Washington, D.C., and I was so excited. You know, I had all this material, and, and we were going to have a great survey trip, and I was going to buy a printing press, and we were going to go to uh, this town and observe the need and make some plans, and it was a big, important trip. I had two suitcases full of Bibles and four suitcases full of supplies, but I was just so excited, and I got there to Washington, D.C., and guess what? There was an ice storm. Did y'all see the weather last Sunday? Anybody in here see the, yeah, it was just wonderful. I told my wife when I flew to, from Greenville to Charlotte, I sent her a message. She probably remembers. I sent her a message that said, if you look at the weather map, I'm fixing to fly into that. Now, the idea would be to fly away from that. But no, 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 not my itinerary. No, my itinerary took me into the middle of the ice storm. Well, I got there to Washington, D.C., and the, the layover was only supposed to be a couple of hours, and then the airline Avianca. Avianca is the name of the airline. It's a South American airline from Colombia. They made an announcement. Sorry, we're de-icing the plane. There will be a one-hour delay. Okay, one-hour delay, no big deal. I got plenty of time in Colombia to catch my next flight. Uh, you know, no big deal. One hour, no problem. After an hour, we're sorry. Having to delay another hour. The de-icers have not arrived yet. 
Avianca is not Delta, and they're not on the top of the priority list for the de-icers. You understand? The big airlines get the de-icers. The little airlines, they don't get the de-icers. So I'm sitting there waiting. Then they put us on the plane. Oh, we're ready to go. They put us on the plane, and we're sitting there, and I'm on my iPhone, you know, doing all kind of stuff, and, and I hear this loud noise. This, it sounded like reindeer on the roof is what it sounded like, but it wasn't. It was, and they, they were de-icing the plane. They had these big scrapers pushing the ice off of the airplane and, and wiping all of that off, and they were doing a great job of it. We sat there, and we sat there, and we sat there for about an hour. And they pulled us back off the plane. I'm sorry. But the plane can't take off. Now, I'm thinking, you just de-iced it. Something ain't right. Well, apparently it wasn't a weather issue. Whatever it was, they all, they all of a sudden turned me into first class. They came up to me, and they said, uh, would you like a ride to the hotel? I'm like, am I paying for this? No, 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 it's all complimentary. They took me to an embassy suites. Has anybody in here ever stayed at an embassy suites? It makes the Crown Plaza look like a Taco Bell. I mean, it was just something else. And they signed me in, gave me a $22 voucher for steak. I thought, hallelujah. This is just not that bad. Now, there's nothing worse than having a $22 voucher for a steak and the restaurant running out of steak. After waiting in the long line with all the rest of the passengers, I got up to, to, to give my order, and the guy flopped the menu down in front of me and said, only these items, Caesar salad and fried fish. Now, the whole time I'm thinking that I'm going to get a steak. And I get up, there's nothing more depressing than knowing you're going to get a steak and having to eat old fried fish. Now, I placed my order at 9.30. You know what time I got my food? 11.15. That's at night. I got my food at 11.15. I finally crashed around midnight. Had to get up early the next morning to catch my next flight. This plane was supposed to leave at 9 o'clock. Got to the airport. Delay, 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 delay. I ended up having a 26-hour delay. Ain't that wonderful? Now, let's look at this situation and see if Jesus was involved. Okay, let's look at his first name. Wonderful. <laughs> wonderful is the fact that they put me in an embassy suite and they gave me the food that I needed and they took care of me and I didn't have to worry about nothing. That's wonderful, right? What about counselor? Well, what if we'd have took off in that plane and it had crashed in the Caribbean Sea? Jesus was teaching me something. I think what he was teaching me was additional patience, which I, I don't want to learn anymore. I've got enough of that. I can tell you all stories. My dad's laughing right now because he knows what I'm thinking about right now. I can tell you stories all day of things that have happened to me that could only happen to somebody that needs to learn patience. And I don't need any more patience. So I'm, I'm learning patience. The wonderful counselor with the, the mighty God. How does the mighty God involved in there? Well, the very simple fact that when I got to South America, I took all six suitcases and a backpack through customs, and they did not ask one single question. And I didn't have to bribe them. Y'all don't understand what that means. That's okay. Wonderful, counselor, the mighty God, getting me through customs without a single problem. What about the everlasting father? Yeah, God made sure that I didn't have to sleep on that hard floor in the airport. He gave me an embassy suite. What about the prince of peace? Yeah, I was all tore up about it. But God was looking out for me, wasn't he? You understand? We can make a personal application with all five of these names. But here's the last one. Okay, so we saw the, uh, the, the, the application where we're looking at any story in the life of Jesus and we see his five names. Then you can look at anything in your life and see his five names. You may be in the middle of a situation right now where you can only find a couple of his names. But when the situation is over with, you'll see all five. Wonderful counselor of the mighty. You'll be able to pinpoint, if you're saved, if you're a child of God, you'll be able to pinpoint every name in this list in every situation in your life. But let's look at the very last one. Well, it's my favorite part. Let's look at the life of Christ and see if we can find all five of his names in order. 
What about Luke chapter number 2? Can you imagine that situation where the, the shepherds had left their flocks, which they never do? Can you imagine the angels, the multitude of the heavenly host, appearing to shepherds, which has rarely ever been done? Anybody in here ever been out with your sheep last night and a bunch of angels come up? I'm not talking about before you were saved when you were hitting a bottle. I'm talking about recently. Has anybody ever been out with their sheep and seen it? That doesn't happen. It was a wonderful thing that happened that night. What about God Almighty coming to earth in the form of man? That's a wonderful thing. What about Mary and Joseph and their story? That's a wonderful story. What about the wise men coming from the east? That's a wonderful story. Everything about the first step in his life was wonderful. As a matter of fact, there wasn't anything that wasn't wonderful. About the first the fact that he did all of that for us is wonderful. Okay, what is the second time we find Jesus in the Bible? We saw him as a, child, as a babe and a toddler. What is the second time that we saw him? Anybody? At the age of 12 in the temple. And what was he doing? Okay, so wonderful was his birth. But then when he was in the temple, what was he doing? He was the what? The counselor. Teaching. Isn't that amazing? You go back in the life of Christ and you see his names. The second time we see him, he is counseling in the temple as a teacher. The third time we see the Lord Jesus Christ, we see his ministry. Okay, so his birth, then his youth, then his ministry. So wonderful, counselor number three, the mighty God. What was he doing all throughout his ministry? Oh, wow, he was doing mighty things, wasn't he? Who can take spit and make mud out of it and heal a blind man? Anybody in here capable of doing that? Nope, nobody here. Who can take a lame man and allow him to walk again? Who can speak words to a dead man and make him come to life? Nobody but the mighty God. And so the third aspect of his life, we see him as the mighty God in his ministry. Okay, so we see wonderful at his birth, counselor at the age of 12, mighty God for three years in his ministry. All three of those represent the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Son. Let's look at his fourth name. Wonderful, counselor, mighty God, what? The everlasting Father. This would be God the Father. Where do you see this? You see this at the fourth major section in his life where Jesus laid down his life on the cross for one reason. And that reason was simply because he wanted to save his children, the everlasting Father. He went into the grave for one reason, to save his children as the everlasting Father. He came back out of the grave for one reason, to save his children as the everlasting father. Okay? So he saw wonderful at his birth, counselor and, and, and as a young person, the mighty God in his ministry, the everlasting father in his death, burial, and resurrection. What is the last event in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ? His ascension. His ascension. Now we saw the Lord Jesus Christ as God the Son in his first three names. We saw the Lord Jesus Christ as God the Father in His fourth name, and now we're going to see Him in His fifth name, and that is the Prince of Peace. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. When Jesus ascended up into heaven, who came? The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, who is the Prince of what? The only way that a person can have comfort in a tumultuous world that we live in today is because of the presence of of the Holy Spirit, the Prince of Peace. So you can look at the entire history of the life of Christ and see it laid out very specifically in His five names. Study that. It'll help you. Let's pray. Father, we're so thankful for the privilege to be in the house of God today. Help us to get a hold of Your names. For every situation that we face, every trial that we face, every, every, uh, every turn, every every angle of our life, we can see one of your names there present. We can see how wonderful you are. We can see you as the counselor, 
teaching us something. We can see you as the mighty God doing what nobody else can do. We can see you as the Heavenly Father looking out for us. And we can see you as the Prince of Peace giving us comfort in a time of need. Help us in these days to be filled with all five of your names. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen.